Max, let's get into th- this magazine, the 2018 Summer Edition of Dave Campbell's Texas Football. I'm going to repeat it again. Subscribers, <laughs> your magazine was mailed on Monday. I don't control the United States Postal Service, but it is in the mail. It is on its way to you. If you're waiting for it to hit newsstands, you are going to be waiting until the earliest would be Thursday. That's not tomorrow, but a week from Thursday. So you can order it online at TexasFootball.com by becoming a, an insider right now. So let's talk about the cover boys. So in, in our, our 400-page magazine, we obviously cover high college football and professional football and recruiting, things like that. But in the high school section, we divide it up into classifications, 6A, 5A, 4A, 3A, 2A, 1A, and private schools. And in each of those classifications, we honor one cover boy. We say, here is a an interesting guy that you need to know about mm-hmm. for the 2018 season. And I'll be honest we, we don't really have a hard and fast rule about what makes a cover boy. Sure. There are... That's not true. They have to be a football player. They have to be, generally speaking... Uh, we we normally lean towards seniors since it's their last time that they could be uh, they could be in this in the magazine in this right. way, um, and we look for guys who have a story to tell, who have an interesting story, an interesting hook. Sometimes it's a big time prospect, yep. right? Sometimes it's a kid you've never heard about, and we want to shine a light on him. So we don't really have a hard and fast rule. But I'll run through our cover boys, and we'll kind of discuss the process of of doing it. Uh, you know, you and I, I think, wrote. Five of the seven cover boys is that right? Yeah, Maybe I, wrote, six I wrote way more than should ever I should ever write. Let's in six A. You wrote the six A cover boy about yeah. Garrett Wilson, yeah. the wide receiver from Lake Travis. I think there's a you know there's a number of different hooks here. Um, one is that he's just an awesome player yeah. and he plays on a high profile team. But the other thing, and something you discovered, and I know you're you're intimately familiar with the Lake Travis program. This is true. But in doing your reporting for this this story, this is a guy that. For all the things that Lake Travis has had, yeah. all the great players they've had, yeah. they've maybe never had a player like this. Yeah, I think the thing that you come away with uh, when you talk to both Hank Carter, the head coach, and everyone really around the program from, you know, and, and every graduate of the program, you know, uh, including the Baker Mayfields of the world, they all kind of agree on one thing. For all the success they've had, for all the players they've had, including now a number one NFL draft pick in Baker Mayfield, they all agree on one thing. They've never had a player as good as Garrett Wilson. Yeah, and I think that says a lot. That says everything you need to know. Yeah, when you have a number one draft pick, and the number one draft pick is saying that guy's way better at football than me, <laughs> then right. you've got something going on. So it was pretty cool. Garrett Wilson, the Lake, uh, Lake Travis wide receivers, are six A cover boy, five A. Um, Jalen Catalan, the Mansfield legacy defensive back. Yeah. Uh, you also wrote this one. I also wrote this one. This was a lot of fun. I mean, anytime you're writing these stories, you really want to learn something special about the story of mm-hmm. the player, where, where he came from, what he's about. My favorite anecdote from this, and I expand a little bit more on it in the story, is that when Catalan was a freshman at Legacy, uh, Coach Melson recalled that uh, in his first spring practice with the varsity, mm-hmm. uh, it's usually sort of a 75% uh, functioning drill kind of thing. Uh, there's hits, but no one's laying anyone out. And this freshman shows up and is relentless, will not stop flattening people as a mm-hmm. freshman. And uh, ever, ever since then, every practice, every day since then has been just in as intense. And from Melson's perspective, Catalan is not only a, a program changer in talent and where he can lead where he can lead the team with his talent, but also in the way that he practices and plays and how much the attitude around the program has changed since he's been a part of it. So that's a really cool. cool it's a good read uh, uh, when you when you, you know, read the whole magazine. I hope you will. Uh, but I will tell you that, that that's a that's a really good read. In 4A, it's Demarway Foster, the running back from Wichita Falls Hershey. This is the leading – he was the leading rusher in the state last year. And I wrote this one. It's and pretty good. I, I liked I was, your anecdotes in this one, too. There were, there were a number – there's too there much. There were too many. too many. I had to edit your story, and I had to cut out some great quotes and stories because uh, last year was just a magical year with a lot of great stories of people who got to see this kid play. Yeah, and, and he really was – you know, it's funny because in a lot of ways he kind of came out of nowhere because we didn't really know who he was. But, but when you talk with Danny Youngs, the head coach at Hershey, he'll tell you we didn't come out of nowhere. He made a prediction in yeah. the beginning of the year yeah. that he was going to do this. Pretty great. And so talk – with him, talk with Demarway, and then I talked with Mike Fuller, who was the head coach at Decatur, yeah. when he had the 590-yard game or something like that, 590-yard game, 
um, that was against Decatur. And so I was interested in getting that perspective. And yeah. and Coach, you'll have to pick up the magazine, but Coach Fuller had some very high praise yeah. uh, for DeMar Lee Foster. And, and why not? He yeah. has been personally victimized twice by them. So it's really uh, – that was uh, really interesting to write. Uh, in 3A, uh, Speedy Cooper, who is the second leading returning rusher in the state from Lexington, Jacoby Speedy Cooper. Um, another it, Greg Tepper joint. Another Greg Tepper joint. And I enjoyed writing this uh, – one because it you know you always look for a hook in these stories and and, and one of the things that was really interesting is I, is I talked with um his mom uh speedy lost his father a couple years ago yeah and you kind of get the feeling that here is this driving this is a driving force yeah. for him like he wants to go and make him proud and so it was really uh it was it was a really good uh a really fun to write this story about about this about a kid who's who's playing inspired football uh, for Lexington. You also get to find out why he's called Speedy. You also get to call, yeah, you get to find out why he's called Speedy and why everybody, because I asked him, it's I did great. ask him, I'll, I'll ruin something, I was like, does anybody call you Jacoby? He's like, like my mom. <laughs> that's basically, that's a mark of a true, a good nickname is when yeah. only your mom calls you uh, by your first name. Yeah. In 2A, it's Ty, P, uh, Ty Patterson, rather, out in Linden Kildare, out east. This is a kid, this is a perfect example of a kid that I don't know that a lot of people know about. Right. But is such a two-way star. Yeah. Uh, a superstar linebacker. They also just try to get him the football in a variety yeah. of different ways. He was a running back for him last year, kind of a receiving type. Um, it was it was a really fun to, to write this story about a kid that hopefully we can shed some light on this kid and, and say, hey, here's a guy who's you know who you don't know about. Those are the mo- most fun stories. Like when you write about Garrett Wilson, that's great in its own right. Yeah, but most people know Garrett Wilson. Right. Here's an example of get introduced to Ty Patterson yeah. at Lyndon Kildare, who's a kid that you're going to get to know, yeah. uh, need to know. In 1A, Tanner Hodgkins from Strawn. Um, Max Thompson wrote this, and I believe the, uh, the, the hook is something along the lines of there were times where it looked like that they had suited up a bear yeah. uh, to play football. It does. It does. I think... Anytime you go to the 1A ranks and there's a player that stands out, there's always something, whether it's speed, some a, a skill mm-hmm. set. He just seemed a little too big and too fast for everyone out there last year. And uh, I, it really was born of all of us sitting in the uh, our little crow's nest there at State going, uh, that one, one player here doesn't look like the rest. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing is he couldn't be more unassuming, uh, couldn't uh, be more uh, – you know, uh, deference, so much deference for his, his teammates. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and really coach Dwayne Lee, the, the best part about it is he just says, you know, I don't really have to ask much of him. He demands so much of himself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you talk a lot about dedication of players at certain levels of football and you sort of expect it at six, a and five, a, I mean, these are just such well-oiled machine programs. The kids are sort of, they have one job and they have to do it. Great. Six man, if these are smaller communities. These kids play multiple sports. You don't expect that kind of dedication. You expect them a little bit more to be kids or kids, you know, mm-hmm. just kind of jump from one sport to the other. Apparently, this isn't something that got into the story, but Hodgkins is the kind of guy who, like, very strictly watches his diet and, like, his caloric intakes and, like, the, the workouts that he does. Like, he is religious about discipline. Um and like a lot of these guys, just a relentless competitor. You yeah. know, it's, I always have to ask about how ridiculous a competitor each of these guys are when I talk to them, and the answer is always the same. I think you're yeah. right. Yeah, so it's a really good read. The 1A cover boy is Tanner Hodgkins from Strawn. And the private school ranks, it's Grant Gannell uh, from Houston St. Pius X. This is the only one we didn't write. Uh, Ishmael Johnson, uh, our editor, uh, wrote this one. And it, it's really what I liked about this story uh, is that with a guy like Gannell, who is a high-profile recruit, I believe he just committed to Arizona, to Kevin Sumlin, Um, a high-profile recruit, it can sometimes be hard to find a new hook, but uh, he really got in and he talked with Stephen Hill, who was his coach last year, uh, now has joined the the staff at Texas State, Um, talked to him about just the level of trust that they have in him to just operate the offense and be like, no, Go do it. We'll guide you, but it's, right. it's on you. And so it was really interesting, and it's a good read. All the Coverboy stories are worth your time in the 2018 Summer Edition of Dave Campbell's Text Football. We certainly hope you'll pick one up.